all over our cities, along our coastlines and across our green and pleasant land, an invisible army is fighting a never-ending war. Their enemy is the filth that we create and the vermin that thrive on it. Welcome to the hidden world of the Grime Fighters. On Grime Fighters tonight, restaurant inspector Andy discovers an unwanted guest. Call your pest control. Crime prevention officer Vicky hears from the public. All you coppers are bent. Environment officer Dino helps with a murder investigation. They've never found the murder weapons, which was a golf club and a knife. Maybe we'll find something, maybe we won't. And pest controller Pete serves up a mouth-watering menu. What we're going to use today, believe it or not, is uh, prime gravy dog food, which works perfect for rats. All over the UK, graffiti is one of the biggest problems for the nation's grime busters. Councils spend hundreds of millions of pounds trying all different ways to eradicate this scourge on our inner cities. For Darren and his graffiti removal team in Dagenham, South East London, the fight is relentless. The daily grind of ridding the area of seemingly meaningless tags and scribbles is often interrupted to respond immediately to any graffiti that's deemed racist and offensive. Dagenham Council is rightly proud of its zero tolerance approach and is committed to getting rid of this type of graffiti within seven hours of it being reported. What makes matters worse is that on this call out the graffiti is outside a local school. And the main priorities are the racist and offensive materials that we get. Uh, even if we're working on a job we'll try and clear that job up quickly, leave that job and then deal with the racist and offensive straight away. The first thing to do as always is locate the offending article. We've got a rough idea where it is on Paris, opposite the school. It's not long before they find the graffiti adorning a traffic bollard. We've found what, exactly what it is uh, and as you can see it's, uh, it's not very nice at all. Not very nice indeed. So what we do is we get this cleared straight away because it is outside the school and I don't want it hanging around. Darren has an array of chemicals at his disposal but the first one applied doesn't get a result. Time to raise the game. It's actually gone right into the plastic and stored itself inside the plastic. So what we're going to do now, we're going to try a stronger chemical, which is designed to go inside and draw it out. But even the strongest chemicals aren't having the desired effect. Best to resort to the old-fashioned approach. Well, as a last resort, what we've done here is we've just put um, just a thin coat of paint over the top to stop it grinning through. As you can see, it's covered it completely now. There's nothing near at all. In Nottingham, Steve and Vicky, the community protection officers who patrol the city centre, are also plagued by graffiti. Theirs is a very different tactic, using photographic evidence to try and catch the budding Banksies. We take photos, we've got hundreds of different tags of graffiti, um, then basically we've got to actually catch this person in the act. And then if they have got anything in their f folders or at home with these tags on, we can link it to what's on our database and then go forward with um, court proceedings. It's a bit like a game really. They're out here trying to do this and not get caught and we're out here trying to catch them. It's a pity they don't take their own advice, isn't it? Um, that's probably aimed at us because they're aware of the fact that we patrol here. They're aware of the fact that we will be coming down to try and catch them. So it is a game and with them writing things up there, I think it's just a, a message to us. Wind up tactic. But it just makes us want to catch them even more, to be honest. Graffiti is just one of the myriad of offences that the CPOs deal with to keep the centre of the city of Nottingham free from littering, fly-tipping and the legacy of antisocial behaviour and drug and alcohol abuse. Just on this morning alone, Steve and Vicky have already dealt with some illegally dumped rubbish, bust a girl for dropping a cigarette butt, recovered some needles, sorted out a car break-in and found time to help the odd person with directions. Time now to catch up with an old friend. Sounds like going all right. Yeah, not bad. Not Doing bad. a good community job as always. There's zero tolerance towards begging on the streets of Nottingham, but overnight, some like this guy have suddenly become buskers. That way, they can avoid being moved on. Anyway, I love you and Lisa, and have a very nice evening. You Take too. Care. Take care of yourself. Well, basically, he's a regular beggar um, throughout the city centre. Now he seems to have discovered the art of playing the um, little pipe so because he can play an instrument it will be classed as a busker uh, although we know the under underlying alternatives are begging. It 
It's estimated that there are over 81 million rats living in the UK. That's one and a half rats per head of the population. For pest controller Pete in Barking, keeping them under control is a continuous struggle. Today, Pete's come to some fishing lakes in Eastbrook, South London, a favourite hangout for his furry adversaries. To make matters more difficult, in this location, he can't use his normal arsenal of poisons and traps to deal with the problem. Uh, we're at Eastbrook, uh, we've got a contract here. We've got rats all round the lake. It's a nature reserve, so we've got to use a live catching trap and not uh, killing traps like mouse traps or backbreakers or anything like that because they're the wildlife. That's why we don't use poison. What we're going to use today, believe it or not, is uh, prime gravy dog food, which works perfect for rats. The dog food actually goes inside the trap and the smell of it, they just go and love it. Pete is the first person to realise that rats are incredibly cunning and intelligent adversaries. To have a chance of trapping your rat, you have to know how and where he lives and all facets of his behaviour. So Pete's got a trick up his sleeve to help him detect what holes the rats are using. What we've got here is ordinary flour. When I come to a hole and I want to make sure I've got activity going in and out, basically this is what I do. I tip the flour into my little sieve and then basically sieve it over the hole. And then, I, when I come back to check my traps on the last thing at night, I walk round and I do this to a few holes and I should get footprints. If I've got footprints, then I know it's a good place to start placing my baits again. But sometimes it's just good old detective work that Pete relies on as to where to set his traps. There's a particular diggings going on here and the actual rat hole is there. If you look inside the hole, how well packed down it is. This looks like a perfect place to set his trap, but there's other psychological issues to bear in mind when trying to catch the elusive rodents. Rats are neophobic, which means basically, once you alter their environment, they don't like it. It might take two to three weeks before they actually hit the trap, but sometimes I have come over here and caught them within the day. Either way, Pete's hoping that the rats will fall foul of his diligent planning. Time will tell when he returns. If there's one way to try and keep our inner city's crime and grime free, it's constantly maintaining their appearance. Once buildings become abandoned and overgrown, very soon fly tipping, graffiti, soliciting and all other manner of antisocial behaviour takes place. These hotspots are often heralded by drug dealers' old trainers hanging off telephone lines. Stand under these long enough and someone will offer you drugs or mug you. In Nottingham, Dino and his Neighbourhood Environmental Action Team, or NEAT for short, makes it their daily job to clear these unsightly areas so the residents can feel more pride and also peace of mind living in the surrounding community. We're in the Radford area today. Um, basically what we're going to do, we're going to try and clear up some of these grotto spots, cut these bushes down to stop cars and coming on late at night, drinking, doing a bit of drugs and obviously fly tipping because as you can see there's a lot of rubbish out and about probably got the contents of somebody's garden, obviously a few conifer trees and stuff. There's no barriers or anything to come into the car park, so what they've done is just ticked it off here. Just try and make the area as nice as possible. While Dino and the team get stuck in, clearing the fly tips and pruning back the undergrowth, their progress is briefly interrupted by the police. Not found anything as yet. Obviously we've just took the big bushes out at the front, so... Fencing as well, wasn't it? Yeah, we took all the fencing away. We've not noticed um, anything in particular. Uh, that was um, CID, there was a murder here in this vicinity two years ago on Boxing Day and obviously she's seen us tidying up and uh, they've never found the murder weapons which was a golf club and a knife. So obviously she's just saying to us now that all the uh, bushes have been cut down, if we come across it, will we give them a call at the local Nick? Who knows, maybe we'll find something, maybe we won't. Whether Dino will uncover the murder weapons remains to be seen, but it just goes to show how crime can escalate in these areas if they're left to deteriorate. In Dagenham, Darren and his graffiti removal team have just arrived at their last racist and offensive job of the day. Uh, we're just going to have a look now in the flats, see what, we, uh, see what we can find anything. It doesn't take long for Darren to find what he's looking for. Right, as you can see here, there's some... Uh offensive material there that we're going to remove today and also there's some there. It is offensive to people and uh, they don't really want to be seeing that on the wall, especially if you're walking by with your kids or something, you don't want to see that. 
the guys here are just getting themselves sorted out with their cables and that and chemical. Uh, we're going to apply some chemical to it, leave it to dwell for a little while. And then uh, once the chemical's dwelled and took its time to sink in, then we'll jet it off hopefully and it should come straight off. Right, well, what I'm going to do now is just apply the chemical. Just get a base on there really. Cover the whole lot. And what it'll do is it'll draw the paint into the chemical and allow us to just jet it straight off. We've got a vast range of chemicals in the van and we'll try the usual stuff, like our usual gel that we use. And if that doesn't clear it, then we'll go on to other chemicals, stronger or milder, depending on what the, uh, what the paint is itself. There's nothing we ain't found yet that we can uh, that stumps us. We, we normally clear everything. It's only a few minutes before the chemical starts to do its job. Can you see it breaking down? It's actually breaking it all down now. All the paint is going into the gel. And that's just a signal for us now that we can actually clear it. The high pressure jet wash makes short work of the graffiti. It's obvious that the gels have made it a simple job to spray off. It's another very positive end to Darren and the team's day, keeping a constant vigil against offensive graffiti. Coming up in part two, Steve and Vicky run into trouble policing the no drinking ban. Pete's hard work seems to get a result. Dino clears the shrubbery, keeping an eye out for the murder weapons. And we're out with restaurant inspector Andy and Lester, discovering a few surprises. We've got a live mouth under here. Throughout the country, an army of professionals are continuing to dedicate their daily lives to waging war on the nation's grime. In Nottingham, community protection officers Steve and Vicky are continuing their patrol of the city centre, now enforcing the no drinking ban. It's an offence in Nottingham to drink alcohol in a public place. It causes littering, but most importantly, often leads to antisocial behaviour. Their first offender seems pretty happy to comply. Hello. Hiya. Um, there's no drinking in the city centre, I'm afraid. We're going to have to confiscate your drink off you. But he's only happy to hand the can over after he's had one last very long drink. There's no alcohol lad in the city centre, so no alcohol designated area. So basically, if we see anybody drinking alcohol, we'll confiscate it from them. I mean, this guy was great, really well-mannered. Couldn't have asked for a better person to confiscate from, really. <laughs> but perhaps Steve is a bit quick to judge the mood of the alleged illegal drinkers. Their next potential offender is a much more difficult nut to crack. Excuse me, where are you going? Come here, mate. Steve and Vicky have observed a guy drinking whiskey on the street and it looked like he'd poured some of the alcohol into a young girl's soft drink. Right now, all the guy needs to do is stop and give his name and address to the officers. But this situation has the potential to escalate. The CPOs are in constant contact with the police, so if a situation like this arises, they can call for backup immediately. Yes, I'm on the Market Square in terms of an alcohol confiscation from a, a gentleman. He's emptied his bottle, thrown the bottle at my colleague, and now he's refusing to stop and give us details. Uh, did I throw the bottle at you? Is there an officer available right. to come down and get the details? You need to turn. You need to stop. Right. No, did I throw the bottle at you? You need to stop. As Steve and Vicky wait for the police, it looks like this could be a lengthy standoff. At the Nature Reserve in Eastbrook, South London, Pete, barking in Dagenham Council's pest controller, is back to do his regular evening rounds, checking the rat traps he's set and baited earlier in the morning. Uh, basically, I've just placed this trap uh, earlier. I'm just going down to check it. Uh, it's a prime spot for rats. But even after his meticulous preparation earlier in the day, this one's drawn a blank, a typical example of how cunning rats can be. Rats are really funny. What? You know, you might not see one for about two hours and then next minute you might see three or four. Pete has taken an interest in pest control from an early age, but it's taken him a long time to secure the dream job he loves. I've been doing this job for about 18 months now. I finally got into pest control when I worked at London Zoo. Uh, there's a bloke there who's doing pest control and I got involved learning bits and pieces of him. Finally caught one. As I said, it's coming on in the evening. Uh, rats are very temperamental. Um, you can either have some curled up, laid back, frightened, get some skitsy running around the cage and all that. Nine out of ten, they're quite calm. Try and not get bit. As you can see, he's come up from the water by the looks of it because he's soaking wet. I don't want to sort of 
go in there and put my fingers in there and get bits straight away. So what I do is I tend to reach in with a little stick just to lift this handle up. As you see, I lift the handle up slowly, reach in, pick it up, pull the rat out. As we can see, and here we have one rat. The rat will be taken away by Pete and dispatched humanely. One thing's certain, Pete's going to need all his expertise, patience and experience if he's going to win the battle against the rodents at the lake. In Nottingham, Dino and his Neighbourhood Environmental Action Team, or NEAT for short, are making good progress clearing the undergrowth around a disused building in the Radford area of the city. It was a hot spot for drug users, soliciting and fly tippers who used the cover of the undergrowth to conduct their illegal activities. On Dino's crew today is John, a rookie, who's only been with the team for a couple of days. It's all right. It's a bit different. I worked in a factory for three and a half years. Job for the council as well. So the only work for the council is a job for life, isn't it? This new job is a world away from John's other career as a professional wrestler. Four years ago, I got an opportunity to start training for it. So I trained, it, I trained for about a year, and then I've been doing shows ever since. But we can work for the council on the weekend of wrestling. One thing that John's sure to find working for the council is a wonderfully eclectic mix of great characters. He's sure to fit in well. One of the most well-known is Derek the Litter Picker. you come to help us, have you? I want somebody to help me. Help you? In what way? Any way they like. You got any jokes for us, Stacey, or what? No, not really. It's one big joke being here. Derek um, is one of the cleansing operatives. Without people like Derek being on the ground force, obviously reporting all the fly tips and everything, we'd be lost. Well, I'll tell you what, your head's shining that much, it must be picking a lot. Oh, what do you do? Polish it every day? Yes. I go to that barber's and have it cut. Ah? Uh -huh. About three or four times a week. I don't know how you can afford it. I don't, it's free. Hey! It's free. One, one turn deserves another. Well, what do you do in turn? Oh, I can't tell you that. Across town in Nottingham city centre, more serious business is on the agenda. Steve and Vicky are still dealing with a rather stubborn alleged illegal drinker, and things are going nowhere. Yeah, and that's if I offered you a big enough bribe, yeah, right. No, and I resent that, and that's why I'm going to challenge that comment right now. Whatever. All you cop is a bent. He's got no grounds to hear these views. I don't know where he's getting them from. No, he just wants to stick around to get on our knees, basically. Soon the deadlock is broken with the arrival of a policeman. All the guys really achieve by this standoff is to alert himself in the future to Steve and Vicky's watchful eyes. All it would have taken for him to was hand over the bottle and we would have taken his details, job done. But he's made this job a lot larger than what it needed to be. One of the Grimebusters' jobs that directly affects us up and down the country is the diligent work of the restaurant inspectors, who tirelessly uphold the cleanliness and food hygiene of thousands of food outlets and restaurants. In Leicester, Andy, one of the city's team of inspectors, has decided to make an annual routine visit to a local Indian restaurant. There are a myriad of things that Andy will be looking for, but the worst thing to find is rodents. If we find a lot of things wrong, then we tend to go back and revisit. If we find a major thing wrong, for example, if we've got mice or no hot water, then we would have to think about closing them down. Leicester City Council award the restaurants smiley faces. A big smile is fantastic, a grin is good, a blank expression is OK, but a frown is a problem. This restaurant had a blank expression last year. They're obviously hoping now to put a big smile on Andy's face. It's going very well so far. I say there's some minor things wrong, but you know, nothing major. Um, but very pleased. So far it's looking good. So after an hour of meticulous inspection, the restaurant seems to be greatly improved from last year. The owner may even be up for a coveted smiley face. But that is until Andy takes a quick look under a cabinet on his way out. Yeah, he just needs a bit of a sweep under there. Oh no. I think we've got a problem. What's that? We've got a live mouse under here. Pull your pest control. If it comes out, I'll hit it. This is potentially the worst nightmare for the restaurant owner, even though it seems that the whole restaurant's hygiene is very good. The presence of rodents could result in the establishment being closed down. Well, I hope he, you know, we can keep them open, but live mice in the kitchen, it normally means that we have to, have to close them. 
unfortunately, until to sort the problem out. Before I make a decision, I will speak to my, uh, my land manager, my, 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 you know, my boss. The discovery of this little mouse now heralds a huge mobilisation of everybody involved to sort the problem as quickly as possible. While Andy rings his boss for advice, the restaurant owner calls his pest controllers to deal with the emergency. Within minutes, the pest controllers arrive. Meantime, the offending mouse has disappeared. But after lengthy inspection by everybody, with no droppings found in the premises or any other evidence of mouse activity, the hole is plugged with wire wool and poison is laid down as a precaution. It seems that the problem is isolated to the one rogue mouse. Looks like the restaurant has escaped closure, but Andy will make weekly visits until he's sure the mouse has gone for good. I don't think there's enough to, to close it down. There's no more droppings, and the only droppings are down there, so I think we can sort this out, you know, by coming back on a regular basis. That one mouse has unravelled all the restaurant's hard work to improve hygiene standards and made sure that the award of a smiley face still eludes them. This time, they'll have to make do with yet another blank expression. In Nottingham, Dino and the NEAT team have completed their work, clearing the fly tips and undergrowth surrounding the disused building. There's been no sign of the murder weapons the CID asked him to look out for, but with the team's hard work, now the residents can hopefully feel a bit more proud of their neighbourhood and a great deal safer, as there's no cover for teenagers to engage in antisocial behaviour. John the Apprentice seems to have done OK too. Yeah, we're just coming towards the end now, and as you can see, it's nice and light again. There's no... Um real areas for people to come and obviously do sexual activities, take drugs or drink in the area. So it's all nice and clear. Since the filming of the show, Andy has returned to the restaurant on a weekly basis and so far there's been no sign of any other mice and Pete is slowly winning the battle against the rats at the lake.